Hey there, this is Dr. Anna Maria Hill, herbalist and microbiologist at osada.com here in Colorado. This is part seven of our Rocky Mountain medicinal plant walk. So we're looking at some really great high elevation plant medicines. Uh, many of these plants are actually found elsewhere, not just in this part of the Rocky Mountains. And so stay tuned. I'll be continuing along with this series over the coming weeks. I have a lot of material that I recorded last summer that I'm posting up. So here we go with part seven. And as always, if you have any questions or you've had experiences with these plants that you want to share, that's what the comment section uh, is for. So thanks for watching and here we go. Okay, Oregon grape. I can't remember if I talked about this when I came out here a month ago. Mahonia repens, Oregon grape. This is some nice fresh green growth. A lot of times when you see this plant, it's a little bit more beat up looking like that guy there. And a little bit later in the season, the leaves will start turning a really lovely burgundy color, or at least around the edges. So this is uh, a very well-known medicinal plant. Uh, a related or, uh, Oregon grape that grows in the Pacific Northwest is actually on United Plant Savers list, I think on the to watch list, but Mahonia repens here is extremely common in the San Juan Mountains around Durango. It's everywhere. Repens means creeping. So unlike the Oregon grape you see in Oregon that is a tall shrub, this one is low lying on the ground. You can actually buy this at local garden shops, by the way. It's not blooming right now, but when it blooms, it's in these little clusters of yellow flowers that smell heavenly. It's like ambrosia. And then they turn into little sort of grape-like fruits in terms of their color. Doesn't taste anything like grapes, but you can add sugar to it and make a jelly. Add sugar to most things and you can make a jelly out of it. So the root is what's traditionally used. It contains berberine alkaloids that are now a super favorite supplement, kind of purified like a drug. Berberines are antibacterial and they have some properties as well that are beneficial when we're supporting mucous membrane health. So when you dig up the root of this, uh, it, you'll know it's good medicine if it's bright yellow with those berberine alkaloids. Now it's interesting, in Italy there was a study, so there's another one there, in Italy, there was a study of their local Oregon grape species, Italian grape, just kidding, it's not what it's called. Uh, and they found berberine alkaloids in the leaves as well as in the stems. Uh, so just look for it, you know, and you can break it off with a fingernail. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that very well, but I'll try. And look to see if you can see some yellow. I actually do harvest this whole plant. I, maybe I'm just diluting my medicine out. Uh, just because plants in Italy have berberine and other parts of the plant isn't a guarantee that ours do, but I do see the little stalks there. The stems will be yellow going pretty far up in my experience here. So I just, I just extract the whole thing. So this is a digestive bitter herb, right? That bitter taste of the medicine is going to stimulate through your nervous system and also through gastrointestinal hormonal regulation better digestion. It's going to stimulate uh, acid production and pepsid production or pepsinogen in the stomach. It's going to stimulate uh, pancreatic enzyme production and bile production, all of the things we need to break down and absorb our food. So improving digestion improves the health of your entire body. Better digestion means you're getting as many of the nutrients and as you can out of your food, the vitamins, the minerals and such. Better digestion also means fewer partially digested food bits, especially proteins, hanging out in your gut and pissing it off and causing dysbiosis or an imbalance of your gut microbes. So simply by working on better digestion, you can actually work on inflammatory issues in the body. When we heal the gut and reduce inflammation there, we're reducing inflammation everywhere else, whether you have arthritis or polycystic ovarian syndrome, it doesn't matter. It's still key to support healthy digestion. Now, this is also known as a hepatic herb. It's a liver herb. It stimulates better liver metabolism. And that is one of the things we herbalists will, of course, do if somebody has chronic skin issues, for instance, because of eczema, uh, psoriasis type stuff, dermatitis, that's chronic kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, working on healthier liver function, Oregon grape is used for that. Now, here's the thing. Um, some herbalists will talk about the fact that this does indeed contain berberine alkaloids, which have antibacterial properties, uh, that maybe it's not a good idea to use this sort of as a longer term plant due to the potential of causing 
dysbiosis. And so I don't, you know, I don't know if that is a serious consideration or not. I take it as one personally myself. So I don't use this plant long term in myself or for clients as a bitter. I might use it just to get things going and then switch them to another bitter. I'll use it for skin issues and stuff like that. But I don't have, I mean, it's not like we should have anybody on any herbs forever, but I don't have my clients on this forever because of the potential for it to maybe start to disrupt the balance of the microbes in our gut because of those berberine alkaloids. I don't buy berberine as a supplement by itself ever. That is getting popular. I just, you know, use it with the plant <laughs> so that it has other plant constituents that help it work better with less irritation. But argan grape, uh, here we go, a very common and very useful native medicinal plant here in the San Juan. So we, we're seeing it in this riparian zone, but it will also be in drier areas as well. It's a very tough, hardy plant. So now about almost a month later, more and more of these guys are blooming here on the Albert Creek Trail. So this is uh, commonly known as false Solomon seal, but it sucks to be known as a false anything. So the other name that I think is better is Solomon's plume, Myathemum racemosum. A lot of people confuse this for true Solomon seal, but actually true Solomon seal does not grow here in Colorado. That is more back east, Midwest, uh, but just an absolutely stunning uh, plant here in our woods. There's a close relative that I'm sure we'll find nearby called Star Solomon Seal that has narrower leaves um, and that one we'll talk about if we see it but the uses are similar and the uses are similar to true Solomon Seal as well. So the flowers are getting a little bit spent here but the this blooms um, from a flower stalk off the top of the plant. It can be confused with another plant around here commonly known as twisted stalk that has somewhat similar leaves but you can tell twisted stalk uh, by amongst other characteristics the blooms not being at the top here rather hanging under the leaves uh, really neat flowers of a completely different shape than what you're seeing here and that plant is also along this trail so hopefully we can find some twisted stalk but this is Solomon's plume it's the rhizome that is used. So the below ground parts, and you can actually transplant this to your garden by taking a little bit of that home with you if you have some shade. This is in the lily family, maybe not surprising when you look at the leaves, but again it's the beneath ground stuff. It's the rhizome that is the medicine. So it's demulcent. It's a great herb for supporting respiratory issues, lung stuff, uh, inflammation, irritated lungs, dry lungs also useful for swollen glands like true solomon seal this is used for musculoskeletal issues pain stuff like that um, overuse arthritis injuries um, delayed menses uh, assuming you're not pregnant so this can help if a period is running a little bit late due to maybe some minor imbalances and this one is not one that you want to just go out into the woods and start ripping up willy-nilly it is not, I mean, it's common around here, but it's not common the way that something like yarrow would be, for example. So my way of using this is to actually take a plant or two home, put them in the garden and let them spread. They do transplant really well, and I have some of them going uh, in the yard now that I live in a place that has a yard. So this is Solomon's Plume, Myathemum racemosa, a really beautiful, beautiful, magical forest plant that you see in the woods here around Durango. And as we walk out further, um, I will keep an eye out for the star Solomon's Plume. It's relative with narrower leaves. Thanks for coming along for part seven. Stay tuned for parts eight and nine and so on. We still have some really great plants coming up that you'll be able to see how they look uh, a little into the summer and learn about what they do medicinally speaking. So stay tuned and be well.